So recently I was trying to print off this model, not this exact model, because this one I've done on my old printer, the Dremel 3D Idea Builder, but I was trying to do a larger version, as you might expect, on the CR10, which I recently reviewed, and I had some issues. Um, I ran into a problem where it would just stop printing in the middle. Now this is a part I dug out of the trash, so there's some <laughs> other color filament stuck in there, but this is uh, the the bottom half, essentially, of this model right here, which I, I've cut in half in my 3D software just so that I could print each half separately and reduce the amount of support material needed. When I was printing this, it just stopped. You know, you come back the next morning or whatever you, when you started and this is all you have and it's printing up here somewhere and you're like, oh. Uh, and also, you know, I noticed that this inside infill was just weak as anything. And it was also, you know, fairly easy to break as well. So this is clearly not right. And I, I tried a few other things, including, uh, well, I'll show you this one here. This is a statue called the Bearded Yell. It's just a kind of a dwarven warrior, I guess. It got up to here, and then it started getting very weird. And look at that, you know, just patchy. And, and then it just it sort of stopped. And I couldn't figure out what the deal was. Now, you know, my first instinct was, oh, I must have a clog or something of that nature. But no, uh, when I was doing more testing, I discovered that the nozzle would just sort of spontaneously stop heating after a while. And that's quite a big problem if you have a 3D printer because, you know, without heat, you don't get any plastic going through the nozzle. So I researched this a bit using mostly the... CR10 Facebook group, and I discovered that, to give you an example here, this is the, the old part. This part right here is called the heater cartridge, and it heats up the hot end here where the filament goes out. This is the tube where the filament comes through. This part right here, which you normally would have to unscrew to get out, was apparently faulty. And if you can see right there, there are some wires coming out that come sort of have a sharp right angle turn there and I think it was kind of broken right here where it connects to this inner part. Um, so yeah, I ended up buying a entire replacement cartridge just like basically what you see here with everything included including the hot end and the nozzle and everything from Tiny Machines. Turns out that wasn't really necessary. I could have gotten away probably with just buying this part the entire assembly was $24.99. This part is like a 2 or $3 part. So obviously, <laughs> that would have been the better choice. But I, I didn't know at the time what exactly the problem was. But when I got it in, I was able to, um, you know, set about repairing it. And that's when I had my first sort of rude surprise <laughs> with this machine, which is that there is no easy way to attach a, a replacement like this. They don't have anything that you can just unplug and plug the new one into. No, this, these wires here go all the way to the uh, sort of brain box of the machine and they're hard soldered into the connector that f attaches to the brain box. So there's no way to unplug them. What you have to do is actually just snip them like I've done here, strip them, strip the new ones that is, and attach them to that same connector again, which for me was quite a <laughs> big deal because I've never done anything really related to electronics. I don't know how to solder. I don't know anything about this kind of thing. Uh, I first I tried using a video that was posted by Creality themselves on YouTube, which I'll link to below, and it basically tells you to strip the wires, separate them off into bundles, and then sort of braid the bundles together and just, you know, manually do it that way without any kind of solder, and then you just wrap it up with electrical tape. And that's what I did at first, but uh, I didn't feel real good about it. It didn't seem like a very robust uh, solution because, you know, these wires are kind of moving around some, and also the electrical tape that I was using was a little bit weak. It seemed like it was losing its stickum, and so... I just, I didn't like it. So I decided to get some of these uh, tubes that I've seen on, uh, on YouTube before. Uh, they're, they're a combination of solder and heat shrink tubing. 
which you they're specific, you know specifically designed for connecting wires like this. And so what you do is strip the wire, you put the two ends together inside the tube, and then you heat it up with a heat gun, and it mel melts the solder over the wires, and at the same time shrinks the heat shrink to protect it. And it it worked uh, really well, I think. And I feel a lot better about the repair after that. So, uh, long story short, I was able to repair this without a lot of trouble. Um, but it is something to be definitely aware of. This is, as I mentioned, built as a kit printer. And even though it doesn't have a whole heck of a lot to do when you're assembling it, I think maybe that kit pr printer designation kind of allows them to get away with some things like this where you, you know, there's no easy way to repair something uh, short of just, you know, soldering a wire or something like that. And for some people that may be too much to do. I thought it might be too much for me, but it turns out it was actually not such a big deal. So, you know, if you do have this problem, I don't think it's the end of the world or anything. Uh, you may ask also, like, what about warranty service? Well, I did contact GearBest and they, uh, well, they made me take a video of the incident, <laughs> so to speak, a video of the, the problem happening. And, you know, I it, after a couple of weeks, I, I got back to them and you know, I was like, so what's going on with this? I really, at that point, had already solved the problem and I was just sort of doing it as a an experiment to see how, you know, they would handle a, a technical problem like this. Because remember, I did pay for that printer with my own money, so I was just a normal um, customer to them. And, you know, they were basically pretty nice about it, but they said essentially that my options were to accept $15 in store credit, plus a, f a few bonus points or something, <laughs> uh, $15 in a refund to my credit card, or I could send the thing back. But the thing is, if you send it back, you had to pay shipping, and that's like 200 bucks or something to China, which is insane. So would not recommend that. So I, I want you to realize, you know, if you are buying this, and I said this in the in the previous review video as well, but it's, it bears repeating that uh, you know you do need to pre be prepared to do a little bit in the way of uh, repairs or maintenance and things like that on your own if you are going to get a CR10. But anyway, I have uh, fixed it as I said. In fact, going back to the model I was trying to print over here, I was able to finally print it on the CR10, just a little bit bigger scale, and. Boom, here it is. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to pull back again, aren't we? All right, here we go. There it is. This is a very impressive model. It's by Paul Braddock. You can get it over at my mini factory. I'll leave a link below. As I mentioned earlier, I uh, cut this into two halves and I was gonna print them separately so I would have minimized the amount of support material needed. Unfortunately, I kind of screwed it up uh, with the big version because Somehow I got the size of the front and half, or front half and the back half, slightly different, and so it doesn't quite match up. But if you just, you know, if you're just looking at it, you wouldn't notice. And this is really just, just a decoration for me. I'm not going to be doing anything more with this, so it's all right. But in any case, as you can see, it is working. I've in fact done a few more things in addition to that. I printed this. Simpsons family on the couch. I had some yellow filament I didn't know what to do with and I thought, haha, maybe I'll print some Simpsons stuff. I don't know how well this is coming through on camera, but it's actually a really cool model. It's uh, got a lot of support material required though. There's really no getting around that, I think, underneath the feet and the overhangs and the faces and things and even behind here in the couch, which was a pain. It was a big pain, frankly, uh, f finishing this up. But Came out, came out pretty well. This uh, can also be downloaded at my mini factory, if you're interested. Finally, well, I've done other things too, but the ones I'm going to show you today, anyway. Finally, is this uh, squirrel by Luby. You can get this one at well, you can probably get it just about anywhere, but I'll give you the link to Thingiverse. I printed this in a actually a very vibrant purple, although it may be looking more bluish on camera. And the nice thing about this one is it just prints with no supports, just prints up like this, take it right off the build platform, and there you go, that's it. So, CR10 is back from the dead.
and I will definitely be putting it to use moving forward. Uh, I do still think the the deal from Gearbest, you, you know, this, admittedly I get a kickback from them, so take this with a grain of salt, but I think I'm being objective here. I think the deal from Gearbest is still pretty good because it's it's quite cheap. You know, you, you may luck out and not have to do any kind of repair or anything like that, or you may have to do a little something like I did, but it's it's so cheap that, you know, it, it's kind of worth the gamble in some sense. Anyway, if you... Uh, are interested in checking it out, I'll have the link to Gearbest below. And thanks very much for watching.